I'm going to find the missing value of 11 sequences of numbers, but each sequence gets more difficult than the previous one. Make sure to try the questions before watching the solution, and let me know in the comments how far you could get. Level 1 In this sequence of numbers, you should notice that there's a common difference between each pair of consecutive numbers. The common difference is 5. To get from the first number to the second number, I would add that common difference of 5. To get from the second to the third, add 5 again. And this pattern holds true for each consecutive number. So to find out what number comes after 23, I just have to add 5 to it. So my missing value, 23 plus 5, is 28. This type of sequence where there's a common difference between terms is called an arithmetic sequence. And then let me just number these terms and very quickly show you what the formula for an arithmetic sequence looks like. So 3 is the first term, 8 is the second term, and so on. To get any term value in an arithmetic sequence, you just take your first term, in this case 3, and you add the common difference of 5, n minus 1 times. And that formula would find you the value of any number in the sequence. We could even sub 6 in for n and see that it equals 28. Level 2. In this sequence of numbers, hopefully you notice there is a common ratio between consecutive terms. To get from the first term to the second term, I would just multiply by negative 3. And that pattern holds true to get to any next term. 18 times negative 3 is negative 54. So to get to my next term, I just have to multiply negative 54 by negative 3. And that gives me 162. This type of sequence, where there is a common ratio between consecutive terms, is called a geometric sequence. And if I number the terms, I'll show you what the formula would look like. To get the value of any term in this geometric sequence, I would just take my first term and multiply it by the common ratio, negative 3, n minus 1 times. If we tested that out by subbing in 5, we would get the answer of 162. Level 3. You probably recognize this sequence of numbers. It's probably the most famous sequence. It's Fibonacci sequence. Notice that the value of any single number in this sequence, I'll pick 3 as an example, is equal to the sum of the previous two terms. 1 plus 2 is 3. So if we continue this pattern, if I look at the first two, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8. So the next number would be the sum of 5 plus 8, which is 13. And then the next number would be the sum of 8 and 13, which is 21. Now, there are other cool patterns in Fibonacci's sequence. For example, let me just write the squares of each of these numbers in another sequence. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. And then notice if I add consecutive square numbers, so 1 plus 1, I get a number in Fibonacci sequence. Add the next pair of square numbers, 1 plus 4, I get 5, 4 plus 9, gives me 13, and 9 plus 25 would actually give me the next number in the sequence, which is 34. And if you're interested in a formula that could find any term in Fibonacci sequence, we could use a recursion formula that says the value of a term equals the sum of the two previous terms. So term n minus 2 plus term n minus 1. Level 4. If I look at these numbers, there's not a common difference or a common ratio, but I notice the difference between the first two terms is 2, and the difference between the next two terms is 3, then 4, then 5. So of course the next two numbers are going to have a difference of 6. So if I do 15 plus 6, I get my next number. 15 plus 6 is 21. This sequence of numbers are known as triangular numbers. And they're called this because for each number in the sequence, I could draw the corresponding number of dots and form them into an equilateral triangle. Let me show you what I mean. The first number in the sequence is 1, so I'll draw 1 dot. The second number in the sequence was 3, I'll draw 3 dots, and so on. Notice each of these can be considered an equilateral triangle. We can visualize that if I look at the third number in the sequence, which is 6, right? There are 6 dots here. This triangle is a 3 by 3 by 3 equilateral triangle. And the fifth term is a 5 by 5 by 5 equilateral triangle that is made up of 15 dots. Also, you may want a formula that can generate these triangular numbers. Let me just number the values in this sequence here. Notice the number we add to get a term is equal to the term number. 
So to get the fourth term, we add 4 to the previous term. So I could write a recursion formula. The value of term n equals the previous term plus n. Level 5. This sequence of numbers, if you try and look for a common difference or a common ratio, or really any pattern in these numbers, you're probably going to have difficulty, right? If I look at the differences, add 1, add 2, add 2 again, then add 4, but then add 2, doesn't seem to be working. And that's because this set of numbers is actually just the set of prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers whose factors are only 1 and itself. So the next numbers that are prime, after 13, the next prime number is 17. And after 17, the next prime number is 19. For each of these numbers, nothing other than the number itself and 1 divides evenly into them. Now, coming up with a formula that can generate the next prime number in a sequence would actually be very complicated. There's something called Willen's formula that attempts to do that, but there's some simpler formulas, such as 6 times n plus 1, or 6 times n minus 1, which are good at generating primes, but they might also generate composite numbers, so they're not perfect. And the formula n squared plus n plus 41 also is great at generating primes that are bigger than 40. Level 6. For this sequence of numbers, let me actually analyze the difference between each pair. To get from the first to the second number, I would have to add 8. From the second to the third, I would add 15. Third to the fourth, I would add 24. And fourth to the fifth, I would add 35. Now, the pattern in those differences is not easily seen, but if I look at the difference between each of those values, and then I look at the difference in those values, I can see, okay, the third differences in these numbers in this sequence are constant. So I suppose I could use that pattern to figure out what I have to add to get to my missing value. The difference in these numbers is going to be 2, which means this is going to be 13, which means I'm going to be adding 48 to 85 to get my missing value, which means my missing value is 133. Let me actually show you a bit more efficient way we could have got that value. If we look carefully at each of these differences, 8 is 1 less than 3 squared, 15 is 1 less than 4 squared, and the pattern will continue, which means the number I would add to get the missing value is 7 squared minus 1, and 7 squared minus 1 is 48. 85 plus 48 gets us that value of 133. And then if I number the terms in this sequence, I could show you a formula that could be used to generate the value of any term in this sequence. So the formula for the value of any term in this sequence, I take the previous term, and I add n plus 1 squared, and then subtract 1. Level 7. For this sequence, if you're trying to find an arithmetic connection between the terms in this sequence, you're going to struggle. This is what's called a C and say sequence. Notice the first number in the sequence is, consists of just 1, 1. So as I was saying what the first number was, I said there was 1, 1. Notice, look at the second number. It says 1, 1. Now, what is the second number made up of? It's made up of two ones. So look at this value, and it says 2, 1. So each value in the sequence describes what the number prior to it is made up of. This number in the sequence tells us that the number prior to it is made up of 1, 2, which it is, and then 1, 1 which it is. This number is made up of 1, 1, then 1, 2, then two ones. So how are we going to get the next value in our sequence? Notice it starts with three ones. So let me describe that. It starts with three ones. And then there are two twos, and then it finishes off with just one one. So there's the last value in this sequence. Level eight. If you've looked carefully at this sequence, what should tip you off is that this number is written as 0, 6. That seems kind of strange. In order to see what this missing value is, I'm going to have to actually take these numbers and rotate them 180 degrees. And now you can see that the original numbers were just given to you upside down. This number that looked like 98 when I rotated it has become 86. And then we have our missing number 
then 88, 89, 90, 91. So it's clear the missing number is just 87. If I were to format it in the original sequence, it would look like this. Level 9. This sequence is a little bit tricky. Hopefully you've paused the video and tried it out. What you'll probably notice is that 49 is a perfect square value, and it's actually equal to the previous number squared. But 97 is definitely not 49 squared. But 97 is equal to 4 squared plus 9 squared. Right, 4 squared plus 9 squared, 16 plus 81 is 97. And look, 4 and 9 are the digits of the previous number. And that pattern holds true. 130 is equal to the sum of the squares of the previous two digits. 130 is equal to 9 squared plus 7 squared. 10 is equal to 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 0 squared. And therefore our missing value should be equal to 1 squared plus 0 squared, which is just 1. Now I chose this sequence of numbers to demonstrate to you what a happy number is. A happy number is a number, so in this case 7, that when you follow this pattern, your sequence ends up finishing at 1. And it finishes at 1 because if you were to keep squaring 1, you'll just keep getting 1s infinitely. And the pattern, as a reminder, is to get any number, you find the sum of the squares of the previous two digits. So when you follow that pattern and you get to 1, the starting value is considered a happy number. Level 10. Finding a pattern in this sequence will be pretty challenging. There are a couple ways we could go about this. Your first instinct might be to analyze the differences in consecutive values. So the difference would be 6, 16, 40, and so on. But there doesn't seem to be any clear pattern between these differences. Now, you could find one. Let me just show you one really quickly that I suppose you could use. And it'll relate to the term number. So let me just number these terms. And then I could find a pattern from how to get from one difference to the next difference. And one such pattern would be doubling it and then adding a power of 2. So to get the next difference, I could just do 2 times 224 plus 2 to the power of 6, which is 512. And then just do 383 plus 512, and that would get me my last number in my sequence which would be 895. Now, I don't really like that method that I just used there. Let me show you a better formula that could generate this value. These numbers are actually called Woodall numbers. And the formula for generating a Woodall number is you do the term number multiplied by two to the power of n and then subtract one. So since we were trying to find the seventh number, if I sub seven into this formula for n, I get 895. And that formula will find you the value of any term number you want in that sequence. Level 11. This one's different because actually what we're looking for, I've given you three sequences of numbers. And there's a relationship between all three of those sequences that should allow you to find the values missing in the fourth sequence. Now, the first thing that might be obvious to you is that each sequence ends with two fours. So let's fill in two fours for the last values of this sequence. And then make sure you've paused the video and really tried to think about this to try and find these missing three values. Okay, I'll show you the solution now. If you're looking for an arithmetic solution, you're going to be disappointed. Because if we notice, let's focus on this first sequence of numbers. The key to understanding this is why does each sequence end with four and four? Well, actually, let me look at the first sequence and let me spell out the numbers. How many letters are in the number seven? There are one, two, three, four, five, which is why the next number in the sequence is five. How many letters are in the word five? One, two, three, four. That's why the next number in the sequence is four. How many letters are in the word four? One, two, three, four, which is why the next number in the sequence is four. And because the number four has four letters in its sequence, it's the only number that has the same number of letters as its numerical value, that's where the sequence ends. So no matter what number you start with, you're going to end with 4, 4. And if you want to test it out, that pattern holds true for that sequence and this sequence as well. So let's try and fill in our missing values for the fourth sequence. So let me spell out 34. 
34. Let me count the number of letters in that number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that would mean the next number in the sequence is 10. And then 10 is spelled with three letters, and three is spelled with five letters, and five is spelled with four letters, and four is spelled with four letters. So there you have it. There was the last most challenging sequence. Let me know in the comments how far you got, which ones you got stuck on, and what series you want to see next. Jensen.